I've been looking forward to speaking with my guests today for some time because I've got Jennifer McInnes here, not in the studio, but here at our David Morgan Centre, who's got a brother living with a disability. You might remember we spoke to Doug McInnes last week. Doug's been employed here at David Morgan Centre for 32 years, and Jennifer has been beside him over that period of time. Jennifer, it's a delight to have you on the show. Thank you very much. Look, obviously one of the reasons I'm talking to you is because you're a family member of somebody who's part of our community here. Do you remember when he first came here? I, I remember my mother and father talking about bringing Doug here because he had friends who worked here. And my dad wasn't well, and my mum said, it'll be much closer for him to go to work. So we said, OK. Yeah, so yeah, yeah. then it just moved on from there. And he's never looked back, really? Never, never looked back. He loves coming to work every day. I don't think there's too many days that he's ever said to me, I'm not going there today. Like most of us in our everyday life yeah. say, oh, I think I'll have the day off. Tell me, Jennifer, what is it about the place that is special to Doug? To, to Doug? To come here. To come here. He, it teaches him life skills, uh, responsibility. Uh, he comes and he knows that he's got friends here. He can come and he can have a chat and a laugh and a joke. And, and he knows that the work that he does is valued, that um, he, he can sit down and he may do a job today that's different from last week. Yes. But each time they show him how, how a new job works, how a new job starts, and if he can't manage it, they say, slow down, take time. Do you know, I tell people because I think folks realise people are living with a disability and sometimes they think of this as uh, not work, but they're wrong really, aren't they? Because this oh. is really a job in every sense. I, I don't think I've ever heard Douglas say to anyone that he gets a pension. He always say, I, says, I go to work. I work at David Morgan. I I do this. I was packaging last week or I was um, working in the garden or this week I'm using the heat machine and, and it's something different and, and it's work that he, he, he knows that what he's doing is, is valued. And David, right at the beginning, the dream that David Morgan had to, to do things is because he wanted people to see out of his Christian compassion yeah. that, that they could really be just like any other any other, other employee yeah. and, and I mean I I hear stories when he comes home and I think wow that's just like in the real workforce <laughs> <laughs> absolutely absolutely look you've journeyed with him through that journey how important is it for him to be committed to a job oh I mean I I don't think that I don't I can't imagine what his life would be if he didn't come to work I would think, I know when he has a couple of days off sick, he's bored, he sits at home and he gets up and he goes and listens to his music or yes. he, yes. can I go to, can I, can I go to Parramatta, can I do this, can I, yeah. I'm saying, slow down, calm down, yeah, yeah. but yeah. To, to come to work every day, yeah. Yeah. it's just something that he enjoys and he looks forward to. And what about some of the challenges he's had to overcome? Um, he, he, he used to walk to work, which was about five kilometres yeah. each day. Uh, a number of times, he, and he has epilepsy, is one of his disabilities, he had seizures along the, along the way to work. And people used to see him every day. And they, one lady picked him up in his car and, and drove him down here yep. and said, yeah. I, I, don't, I don't know his name, but he works here. Yeah. And... Yeah. and People along the route used to just know where he was and what he was doing. Um, difficulties? Probably um, just, just like everybody else. The greatest one possibly lately has been he's overcome serious illness, hasn't he? And, yes. And that's been... And that's that actually, I guess, that, that's been a struggle for him to realise that he couldn't walk yeah. five kilometres to work. Yeah. Every, and now I drive him and, and he says, I'm getting the bus home today. And I ring Ashwani and say, Ashwani, don't let him get off <laughs> on that bus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And Ashwani says, oh no, we'll, we'll walk him over to the bus stop. Yeah. And I said, okay, fine. Yeah, yeah. So, 
Yes. So there's a bit of a partnership, isn't there, really, uh, between yourself and the family? And, him. and yes, and and the, and the staff here. And the Christian faith means a great deal to him. I know that uh, he comes to our 3 p.m. congregation, mm -hmm. and I know that he was put on the reading list, and that was very important to him. Yeah. He to to do the readings. Um, as you may have, we, reading is a struggle for Doug. Yeah. Um, but we have a neighbour, and he went down to Eckhart and said, "Can you help me? I'm going to read the Bible yeah. at at church next Sunday." And Eckhart sat with him yeah. for yeah. a week, yeah. hearing him and helping him yeah. with it. And we we did that for probably two or three months. Yeah. Um, yeah. He'd have a new verse. He'd know what he'd be doing. So he'd go down and see Eckhart, and Eckhart would help him. It was just really for him. And then when my brother passed away, we decided, what can Doug do in yeah. the service? And yeah. he read he read the Bible. He did a Bible reading at my brother's service, and like that, that was tops. That was yeah. so good. Yeah. yeah. Well, thank you ever so much for sharing with us.